Hey guys, Rendon Ricks here with Let's Do Crypto. In this video, I want to show you how to set up your Trezor hardware wallet under Linux. So these instructions should work for most Debian distributions. I'm using Linux Mint. This will also work for things like Ubuntu. So let's dive right in and take a look. Trezor has really good support for Linux. It's one of the best hardware wallets out there with Linux and cross-platform compatibility. So let's dive right in. I'll show you how to set that up under Linux Mint. Okay, so for the Trezor, uh, we're just going to plug in the USB cable right here and it came with a little short USB cable like this but I'm using a longer one that I had just so I could get it to my computer and it actually came with two of these recovery cards and you fold them in half like this and then this is the instruction manual so it, what it says to do is go to uh, trezor.io slash start. So we'll do that first. What do I have, a Trezor 1 or Model T? I have the Trezor 1. So we'll click that. Okay, so it says to plug it in and make sure the hologram comes up. So we'll just plug this in first. Perfect. With the Trezor plugged in, click Continue to Wallet. And it will take us to a site that lets us download this bridge software. So it's Trezor Bridge. Uh, this is a .deb, so it's a Debian package. I'm using Linux Mint. Um, this is sort of similar. These steps work on Mac and Linux, uh, Mac and Windows as well. But it's nice that they have a good working Debian package. Um, so we'll just install this. We need to type in our password to authenticate it and it's a very small file so it installs and this is just the software that lets our computer uh, interact with the Trezor via the USB port uh, so this page uh, now refreshes but we get a USB error in the top left there so to fix that I just unplug the USB from the computer and then plug it back in so just kind of power cycle the Trezor uh, and then it reconnects and refreshes on the page now. So we just click install firmware next and this will download the firmware from the Trezor website and then it uh, pushes that uh, off to the device. On the device it says do you want to confirm this let's say yeah install new firmware so we click the button to install the new firmware it erases everything on the device I believe you can do a firmware update without losing your seed, but it recommends, highly recommends that you record your seed phrase just in case you end up losing it. And then it gives a fingerprint over here um, with the firmware, and it shows it on the Trezor screen as well. So we can look at the fingerprint on the web browser and on the Trezor to confirm that they are matching. And they are. So I confirmed that. Here we go. New firmware successfully installed. You may now unplug your Trezor. Perfect. So I just unplug it and plug it back in here. Perfect, updates finished successfully. So now we just have the, uh, like the icon here on the screen just saying, this is basically saying that our treasure is up, powered up, working and ready. So we can now create a new wallet because we don't have one created yet. Okay, so the first step it's wanting us to do is create a backup. That's our recovery seed. This is the seed that helps us generate all of our private keys and public receiving addresses for all different cryptocurrencies. So this seed alone will let us uh, recover our Ethereum, our Bitcoin addresses, anything that we have here. So it shows first word. We just write it down on this here. So I've already done all that. I'm not gonna show you my recovery seed, but then we choose a pin for the treasure. And so to set the pin, uh, it asks if we really want to set a new pin, which we do. So we'll hit confirm. Uh, and then it shows us the pin layout on the Trezor. And then on our web browser, it shows us kind of the same layout, but just with dots. And what this does, it lets us choose a pin 
Um, so that if someone's watching our screen or capturing the movements of my mouse on my screen, they still won't see what numbers I'm clicking on. So we have to enter that in twice. I've set my pin and uh, it lets us, if we want to, we can choose a name for this Trezor device. So I'll just put uh, Rindo Trezor on this one. Uh, in case you have multiple or in case you're wondering what device is plugged into your computer, it's a nice way. So to set that, we have to put our pin in. And this is kind of a common thing. You have to put your pin in when you make changes to your Trezor or when you uh, first connect it to your computer also. Okay, we'll just click continue here. Uh, this is optional. I'm going to skip this step. And they want you to follow them. Stay up to date. We'll skip that as well. And that's it. With this web browser interface, uh, we can make changes to the settings of our wallet. We can kind of see what's happening with our wallet. And we can also choose different cryptocurrencies to interact with. Uh, so I'm going to show you an example here, um, just interacting with Ethereum, how to access an Ethereum wallet. Um, we can either go through my crypto or my Ether wallet. I'm going to choose my Ether wallet. It's very tried and true and open and transparent. And it can also be ran offline. So we'll just select hardware wallet to interact with the hardware wallet. Um, if you're if you never never used this before, check out my other videos where I show how to use my Ether wallet. We'll select Trezor as our device and then go choose hardware. So as you can see, there's lots of different ones to choose from. This takes us over to the Trezor.io uh, portal where we will uh, then approve this. So on my uh, device, um, I've already put in the pin and unlocked it. So it's unlocked on my computer. And now my computer is just asking, do you want to share information about your public key with um, my Ether wallet? And so I can say export. And what that's going to do is going to export the public key that's already pre, uh, kind of pre-authorized with my private key, but without actually sending them my private key. So they, they don't have access to my private key. That just stays on the Trezor. But now it shows me the accounts I can interact with. So I'll select this top one, agree to the terms and conditions, and then go to uh, Access Wallet. And from here, we can send and receive Ethereum tokens. We can interact with dApps. Um, like I said, check out my other videos if you want to learn more about my Ether Wallet. Um, but hopefully you found this video informative, and I'll catch you in the next one.